Thank you very much. Good morning to everybody. I agree with Matt that noise is very important. I disagree that it's uh, something unwanted. Uh, actually, sometimes it's a very powerful tool uh, to investigate physical phenomena and materials, also from condensed matter through electronic medicine uh, as far to financial market. Uh, there is real science and people investigate noise. This is an example, direct observation of fractional charge in fractional quantum hole effect when people from this Israeli group, also from another French group, something like 25 years ago, show measuring shot noise of electrons in two-dimensional system that really uh, fractional charge can be observed. As Matt mentioned, uh, power, uh, noise power in short noise is proportional to charge. And they show that it really could be one third. That leads to independent uh, uh, justification of Laughlin theory of fractional noise and led to Nobel Prize to Stormer, Tsui, and uh, Laughlin. This is my measurement of noise in silicon, two-dimensional uh, gas in silicon, which is sort of due to electron glass in this material. But now let me switch to uh, unwanted noise suppression in our lab. In common use, the word noise means unwanted sound. Uh, in our practice, noise is what obscures measured signals. This is a very important issue in our lab uh, because we have very high power, megawatt power, power supply, transformer, uh, in addition, cooling water running through magnet, and at the same time, the highest magnetic field. Uh, this problem is even worse in pulsed fields when uh, pulsed magnetic fields are generated. This is one of our transformers. Uh, we have ten of uh, eight of them, and generally uh, power installed in DC magnet area is something like 50 megawatts or so. Magnets plus pumps. This is really high power. I will focus here on electrical measurements only. So this is my outline. I will start from very important grounding system here because of this high power installed. Then I will switch to problems with low frequency noise, then high frequency problems. And then I will show many examples of diagnostic methods and things which can uh, suppress the noise. What is ground? or earth, maybe the reference point to in an electrical circuit from which other voltages are measured, or a common return path for electric current, or most common direct physical connection to the earth. Uh, safety requirements uh, in US are that this uh, grounding uh, instrument should be grounded with at least 25 ohms to the earth, and those are this is typical uh, designation of real earth, and this is how it looks. It goes really to the earth. Uh, so what is ground loop usually refers to a current generally un unwanted. In a conductor connecting two points that are supposed to be at the same potential, often ground, but are actually at different potentials, this is an example, TV set and DVR or home theater, which are connected uh, because of uh, acoustic signal from TV or whatever way, and they are both grounded. Uh, so in this loop, the some alternative field is always present from transformers and so on, uh, usually 60 hertz, and uh, result in 60 hertz boom in acoustic signal. To kill it, the best thing is to 
to use optical cable between those things. Uh, also, we use optical insulation in our lab to uh, isolate computers which are very noisy from uh, measuring setups. This is the same, but here you can see experiment, measuring instrument, ground loop, which results in some additional voltage on the input, which results in noise. Now, uh, this is typical American power outlet with three terminals, so-called live, neutral, and grand. Uh, this looks very different in different countries. This is, I think, English. No, this is German. This is looks like Australia, and so on. Surely, German outlets have this good uh, thing that you can uh, swap between neutral and live. This is grand. This is grand, and you can rotate. Which, for some measurements, especially in pre-digital area was very important. So, how power outlet looks inside? First of all, we have somewhere a high voltage transformer, which converts high voltage to 110 volts in US. Uh, and then this uh, current uh, flows through live wire, which is uh, at 100 then. It is also called phase, line, hot or active, and neutral, which is sometimes called return, which is grounded here close to this transformer. At the same place, there is a uh, ground uh, cable, which is also called earth, safety ground or safety earth, and they go to outlet on the wall. Uh, sometimes, those cables go individually to each room and even individually to each outlet, not in this lab, to provide so-called clean lab, so clean ground, that if anybody in our room connects something very noisy to this ground or has strong leak, uh, you can still use so-called clean, uh, uh, clean ground. Generally, current in this wire, in the ground, should be zero. We will check it during our practical in-cell fall later today and tomorrow. Exception that sometimes if there is ground loop, insulation faults, or sometimes there are some electromagnetic interference filter installed on the input on your uh, instrument, so they put something some high frequency to, uh, to the ground. Uh, now, another something from home practice, ground fault circuit interrupt. Uh, also uh, in home, uh, say, leaks to the ground are not welcome. And uh, sometimes you see, uh, especially in the kitchen and generally where it's water, such an outlet with red and uh, black button. Uh, this actually checks. This is live, this is neutral, this is transformer, okay? When uh, current comes through neutral and leaves, uh, through leaf or life or another one, uh, when there is balance here, nothing click, there is no current in this circuit. One, when there is imbalance here, this circuit uh, switch off uh, the current in this outlet to prevent situations like this where this lady uses a uh, hair dry, uh, dryer in the, uh, in the bathtub. Uh, actually now uh, hair dryers uh, have this device installed usually uh, on inside, on, on their Okay, uh, this is our ground loop detector works very similar. We have this clamp, and if any current goes inside this clamp, uh, this shows, it's calibrated and shows this current. It is sort of transformer with open core, 
and why under investigation is just secondary winding of the transformer. This I can, oh, this is what we uh, are up against in the lab at low frequencies. This is a uh, screenshot from scope uh, from some grounding, old grounding system. You can see here like this is scale of five millivolts. So this is all like 50 millivolts maybe. And this is in the air, on the ground, and um, those high voltages, uh, those are higher voltages than excitation of our uh, samples and thermometer. Uh, this was mentioned, uh, white noise or Johnson Nyquist noise, uh, which is a sort of base of the lowest noise you can see from a uh, resistor. Uh, this is basically due to thermal agitation of charge in any conductor. And it's, as it was said already, something like four nanovolt per square hertz from one kilo ohm. We will maybe try to see it during our practicals. Uh, this is again uh, also shown noise figure which sort of shows optimum uh, region of our preamp or locking amplifier or whatever where is uh, optimal measurement here it's center frequency it's like 10 oh, one kilohertz here uh, optimal resistor is like 10 to 5 10 to 6 uh, Kilo -ohm, uh, ohms. This is, I think, uh, Princeton applied research locking. Uh, and here, where there is zero dB, so it doesn't add any noise. We will try to observe uh, Johnson noise later today. This is an example when not proper locking input was used. Uh, so this was experiment on the table, no, not any uh, cryostat involved, uh, uh, measurement on something like 100 ohm. Uh, um, this was resistance, re resistance bridge, so uh, sample was like 100 ohm. And as you can see, when we use 100 mega ohm input, uh, then noise is as high as 10 nanovolt standard deviation. It's 10 nanovolts when we use uh, proper input locking like 15 kilo ohm, it's um, uh, reduced 10 times. So it's very substantial and we measure almost one nanovolt. But this was measured in enclosure. Uh, this is the same measurement as this one red, but uh, those resistors were not thermally uh, isolated in, the bridge was not thermally isolated uh, at the table at room temperature. And this period is just thermal fluctuation because of uh, air conditioning system on and off, which results in small but uh, observable very well observable differences on this uh, bridge. This is typical spectrum of the noise in grounding tables in different magnet cells when switching DC power supplies are on. To produce 20 mega, uh, megawatts from AC uh, power we are getting from city or from power station. Uh, those three phases are rectified, then uh, um, sort of shifted and switched by thyristor. So because, so we have of course 60 hertz as uh, basic frequency, but always higher frequency due, due to this uh, switching and 
shifting of the phase. And because of that, it's good to set frequency of your locking below 60 hertz. So uh, people measure here usually with 22 hertz or something like that. Still, uh, Johnson noise from one kilo ohm resistor could be measured here, but on the table, not in the magnet. This is rather impossible. Also, I warned some people from Europe that we have 60 hertz here, not 50. We uh, had users who uh, set their measurements at 60 hertz, which was not very good idea. Uh, later, we built new grounding system. This is blueprint of uh, all the magnet in DC area. Uh, building grounding system, and this is uh, usual everywhere, is interconnected between magnets, power outlets, water mains, building construction, and this makes a huge net of ground loops which pick up a lot of noise. And we observe here currents up to one amp and voltages up to one volt on the building uh, grounding system. In the corner of each cell, you have this old grounding system. Usually, this comes from another cell, this comes from magnet, and this goes to uh, ground. Uh, and those are measurements uh, I made some times ago at different cells, and as you can see, 25 milliamps, 140 milliamps, almost one amp in this cell, and so on. Such grant is not acceptable. On the other hand, there were some uh, uh, grounding rods in uh, part of our building which after some time uh, dry out and showed uh, resistances up to 100 ohms, which is not acceptable from the point of view of safety and also from the point of view of measurement. So we made uh, grounding rods in first in one of place, so we put like 20 uh, feet long copper rods into ground and measure the resistance when we uh, hammer them deeper and deeper. And here there is resistance versus uh, depth. Sorry, it was 20 meters, not 20 feet. So somewhere at uh, well above 30 feet, we are coming to desired few ohms uh, resistance. This depends on Grant, of course. Here, grant is not good because it's sound and there is uh, porous limestone below somewhere at 20 meters. Uh, those are actually similar uh, graph from literature from other places in the world. And as you can see, usually what we get uh, hammering rods like this into ground, uh, we are getting a few ohms uh, uh, sooner or later. Those rods are commercially available in any hardware store in the country. They are connected. This black thing is bentonite, sort of ply, which makes them better uh, conduction to the ground. Ground is not low resistive, even if it's soaked with water. Uh, its specific uh, resistance is something like uh, 10 to 4, 10 to 5 per cubic centimeter. Of course, the volume is huge, so puffs are huge. There are two methods. Thi this, was this is actually an electrode which was put over strip and we put DC into ground. Then there is another electrode, mm, say, to measure voltage outside. And then we put 
yet another electrode to our uh, grounding road under investigation. And this way we measure what is, it is like free probe measurement. Uh, we measure uh, how resistance of this rod changes. Another method is with our uh, clamp on ground, uh, maybe I have this, no, uh, ground measurement. So if you have a uh, grounding road under investigation and something you know it's a good ground, you use this clamp on uh, device which basically works as follows. It put a pulse of, I think, three kilohertz uh, uh, magnetic fields or current to this uh, loop and then measure answer. And it's sort of calibrated. We compared those methods and they were very, very good in comparison. This is our grounding system around uh, magnet uh, after modification uh, here. Uh, before the building was built, so-called star ground was put deep under uh, our DC area. Um, now it's not very easy because we have like two or three feet concrete platform on which all the magnets stay, because in Florida we have sinkholes, so to prevent any sinkhole problem, it stays on solid, huge platform. Uh, those are, and we put grounding uh, to each and every cell from those two places. And in each and every cell, you can see this uh, copper bars which are designed as clean ground and uh, don't use this dirty ground which is usually in the corner of each cell. So this is sort of uh, resume of those uh, problems with grounding system before and now. I will not read this. You can you will get copy on this presentation. Uh, yes, so this let's go to high frequency problem. Uh, generally, what is low frequency? Or what is high frequency? High frequency is when wavelength which corresponds to this frequency is lower or comparable with uh, dimension of your setup when uh, those wavelengths are much longer, like kilometers or hundreds of kilometers at uh, 60 hertz, we call this low frequency. Low frequency, you can grant. If you start to grant high frequency, uh, this can result in uh, even amplification of the signal, because you never know what is ground, what is antenna, antenna, then you have standing waves and so on, yes. So we check frequencies uh, we observe around the lab. This is uh, power, maybe voltage of radiation versus frequency from 100 kilohertz to something like 3 gigahertz in different places around the lab. This is typical uh, with uh, power spectrum, which you can see almost everywhere. This is cell 7 with, for instance, this characteristic, uh, no, this is characteristic area of FM radius. And this is observed everywhere, also, also beyond the lab. Uh, we spot, sometimes you spot something special, of course, computers, uh, they produce some high frequency and so on. But we spot in some places, for instance, this is very noisy, 
uh, UPS device which was in one of the uh, feeding one of the microscopes which I don't know why but produced produced very wide spectrum of frequencies around 2 and I think 10 megahertz. Now why we care about uh, high frequencies uh, beyond problems which Matt uh, mentioned uh, because uh, first of all because people measure nuclear magnetic resonance here which those resonances are usually around FM radio below or above, for instance, 100 megahertz. So they don't like it. Another thing is that those frequencies correspond to energy of electrons of their thermal movement at low temperatures. Below 100 mK, electrons are not very well connected thermally to the lattice especially in uh, atomic semiconductors like silicon, for instance. It's better in uh, two-atom crystals because phonons are almost uh, not present at those temperatures. Uh, so first of all, with this frequency, uh, like 100 megahertz, gigahertz, and so on, we can warm up electrons and measure them in different temperatures that we think, a different temperature than thermometer, thermometer shows. I think this is example of resistance versus temperature. This is uh, 400 mK, this is 1 mK, and this is resistance of minimum uh, in um, resistance in fractional quantum Hall effect which shall go to zero practically, but here we can see there is apparent suppression. And this is because of warming this by electrons. Uh, another even worse thing uh, is that um, scattering of electrons from uh, electromagnetic quanta at those temperatures, uh, it's uh, sort of effective those energy are comparable, so those are inelastic scattering process, processes, and this change the phase of electrons, so all the interference phenomena uh, observed in at those low temperatures could be killed. Uh, to prevent all this, we put um, shielding, copper mesh uh, around especially mini Kelvin building where there is our best low temperature device and uh, here you can see comparison of signal versus frequency those are ra radio frequencies from 92 to 108 megahertz and what is showed blue here is outside and those are just radio stations you can hear in Tallahassee. And still uh, we have something inside shown in red, but it is reduction like 10 times in power and at least NMR people are very happy. I think this what they show here. Yes, that their signal, those frequency measured, but uh, NMR spectrometers was suppressed very much. Ah, this is AM radio at 127 megahertz, very close radio station. It's easy to suppress NMR, so this was, this is out, this is in. Almost we cannot see it. Also because of those problems, there is no Wi-Fi uh, routers around uh, magnets, which some uh, users complain. You have to use hard connection because those things uh, at 2.5 and now at 5 gigahertz can warm up electrons substantially. Uh, this is another example, noise from induction lamp check. Induction lamps uh, work generally that you have 
uh, uh, high frequency like static hertz, but this is a very high spectrum which ignites uh, like in a fluorescent lamp, but this is this use high frequency, so we check it and we don't use it. They were on the other hand, such a lamps are very effective and uh, very long living. I hope that now uh, what is everywhere uh, when LED lamps are sort of uh, very common, they of course are also very quiet, so it would help a lot. Okay, let me switch to uh, sort of suggested good practices when we start measurements in resistive magnets. So, first of all, is to mount samples, and I would say even prepare samples this way uh, that we can use twisted spares in the probe and cable. Now it's more than a more problems because people come with ready to go ships where there is 16 terminals, but we cannot change it. And there is, I don't know, four gates, uh, three different samples inside, and uh, this must be done during design uh, time. Then isolate your probe or cryostat from the magnet, double check if cables, shields connect ground between instrument and the probe. Usually they don't. Uh, secure cables against vibration. This is the must uh, mention and vibrations in our lab are higher because we have uh, hundreds of gallons water running through the magnet which doesn't uh, occur in superconducting magnets. Isolate the probe from pumping lines using plastic clamps and O-rings like this. Check this connection using ohmmeter with sharp terminal uh, because stainless steel, oxidized, aluminum, copper are difficult to contact some sometimes with not sharp um, then check your setup for ground loops using ground meter and or the scope and current clamp. Ground meter solves with all the mm, ground loops and during practicals in cell four, you will chase those ground loops in the system. So starting off, twisting wire, uh, reduce area between them, especially in the center of the ship. This is a sample and this loop is something like one square centimeter. After putting this needle like here or here, you can see twisted pairs which are coming to the very sample. Uh, in that experiment, we could reduce noise from one microvolt to 100 nanovolt at 31 Tesla. Uh, this was DC measurement, actually. So what I mentioned, uh, in many our systems, we have those um, deep connectors, dual in uh, precision connectors that user come and plug in his sample here. And as a standard, consecutive parts of pins here are twisted pairs. So this and that, this and that, this and that. And if you are coming with sample from home, it's better to prepare like this, uh, to connect voltage to AB and so on. If you measure at the same time, this is sample, hole effect and longitudinal uh, voltage, it's better to uh, put this terminal sort of, we are losing one wire here. It is connected by twisted pairs hole CD and longitudinal AB. Uh, however, this is connected twice because measuring on not twisted pairs 
can overload locking uh, if you are not lucky or push to measure on high dynamic reserve uh, of locking which means small uh, amplification of uh, input uh, amplifier and of course result in higher noise okay this is usual cable which connects experiment to the probe with and uh, cable is shielded and uh, shield is connected here to the cryostat and this is an option you can remove it or keep like this cryostat must be uh, ground somewhere from one way sometimes grounding through Shielding cable is more effective against noise than grounding the cryostat by this thick cable. Uh, those are typical plastic clamps. You can uh, isolate pumping lines, but remember they are made not to isolate ground. They are made to be cheap and in industrial uh, applications because of that they have those uh, small copper or brass clips which must be removed uh, this is example of uh, very sharp terminals which are even sort of dangerous but uh, you measure with them much more effectively also if you check probes they fit to uh, these connectors much better they are produced by Pomona and I very like them diagnostic what we have we put some devices of this on this noise crash card as we call it we have two of them and it contains ground meter this uh, Megger is a company now we have also from Klug which is the most important device here and we can chase ground loops very quickly and also measure ground, ground resistance uh, there is AC current uh, clamp which we can uh, attach to this uh, scope and not only see if there is uh, current in the grant but also sort of see what is its um, spectral characteristic usually this is 60 hertz and harmonic uh, we have also DC current clamp but we don't use it very often uh, this is uh, something based on whole effect and you can measure current in the conductor not cutting it uh, you can measure have also differential amplifiers to scopes for higher frequency we have this uh, radio frequency spectrum analyzer which is on batteries you can go around and uh, sometimes we use laptops to connect to co collect data this is this small clamp connected to uh, oscilloscope which measures spectrum on this grant here and if it shows something like this you can see here signal this is obviously periodic and in red you can see spectrum from this which is obviously 60 hertz and so on this actually cursor shows what two six 660 hertz of course it's a little bit not so uh, tense harmonic uh, so this is means very bad if you observe something like this if you look at this is something like one millivolt and this is actual high frequency from uh, radio those are radio frequencies which are uh, everywhere of course so to stabilize voltage and also to 
isolate grants, we use those uh, ferro-resonant uh, line voltage regula regulators, which are uh, maybe not the best solution, but they uh, work like this, that they are plugged into the wall and they are grounded with dirty ground uh, from that side. And the secondary winding goes to experiment and also clean ground comes here and is in this uh, power outlet. Generally, we will make uh, we will make practicals today, so you have to uh, make system which was uh, measuring setup which I built this way that it contains many many grant loops, but your uh, goal is to have uh, zero current on grounding wire on this grounding wire. This is your goal using this quick detection of ground loop current should be zero which i just tell we will also uh, maybe demonstrate uh, johnson nyquist uh, noise now i think is we everywhere we use those gpib opto uh, isolators as you know gpib cable carry ground so if we have a computer and our setup we don't want computer to be plugged in to the same place like our measuring setup because computer contains very uh, a lot of high frequencies which are not good for our uh, measurement at low temperatures uh, so to resolve this problem we use those old uh, GPIB isolators which uh, optically connect input to output and uh, so there is no grant connection provided that you connect them properly so GPIB B this is input which goes to experiment and GPIB A is what goes to the computer uh, including this uh, power cable which goes to the wa wall outlet of the same place where computer is plugged. If you plug this uh, re in reverse, you produce ground loop, of course. Uh, sometimes we rotate samples our probe and this is typical IMS stepper motor driver which is connected from one side to the motor on the probe from other side by serial connector to the computer and of course there is a power line connected so remember that this should be connected to dirty power outlet like computer because again uh, unless you put uh, in insulation on RS cable. This is possible, of course, but it's not recommended because uh, stepper motors and even servo motors are sort of noisy in for our experiment, so all the connections should be kept as far as possible from experiment. Sometimes uh, what? Uh, this or yeah, that? This? Ah, okay, okay. Thi this was in many years ago. Some uh, grand loop because of cover of this uh, scan, so to say, lock-in was uh, an accidentally connected to the chassis. Uh, here uh, on left side you can see stepper motor on the top on the probe which is isolated with uh, plastic screws here but still it was connected because some uh, conducting dirt went here and it was spot by ground loop detector. 
Uh, it was also mentioned thermoelectric effects. Uh, it's very important you use uh, proper connectors and so on, but sometimes very dirty trick like isolate thermal uh, those connectors with cotton or whatever on the probe is very important, especially where they are uh, above cryostats with uh, liquid nitrogen vapors and so on. And uh, then uh, noise reduction to nanovolts is possible. Another dirty trick to reduce uh, vibration of pumping line using those sand uh, factory sand. What is the, uh, ah yes, this is my favorite. So sometimes you have noise because you use a low temperature uh, tin lead um, solder. And this is second type superconductor. When it goes through zero field, okay, we are high magnetic field, lab, but still, if we go around like below one Tesla, uh, it uh, generates some noise and even generate heat or sometimes cooling down because of magnetocaloric effect. When this solder goes through uh, superconducting transition, which is second type transition, so you have exce uh, excess heat when sweeping field up from zero Tesla. Use rather indium, which is uh, first type, very clean indium, first type superconductor or silver paste when possible. Uh, it was also mentioned about different cables because of triboelectricity. Uh, electricity. So when cable uh, vibrates or when we bend the cable because of friction between isolation we genera generate some voltages and uh, those are different cable tested. Uh, this way that they were connected to input of the locking and bent quickly. As you can see for some cables, uh, this is, uh, okay, so this is comparison between Belden 9993 cable and Klopp German cable for actual acoustic. And as you can see, there is huge difference. This trick is 300 millivolt LMS on locking, where this is well below 50. Uh, nobody bends cables like this, but, and this is effect of comparison of different ca cables uh, against triboelectricity. So this Belden cable, which is cable for digital things, so nobody cares about triboelectric effect. Uh, but you see this German cable and New England wires uh, uh, cables, which we parted and which, you which are used in our measuring system. They are actually, as Mark mentioned, with some graphite to conduct between isolating uh, parts, which make a little bit problem because it's very difficult to connect them. Because on one side you want to isolate, or if this graphite uh, goes between your wires and so on, you cannot have enough resistance to measure high resistive samples. I check also cables against electromagnetic pickup at 33 Tesla, which is some uh, electromagnetic through this small device. As you can see, what uh, pick up uh, most are single coax cable. If you tweet the coax, you have reduction like, I don't know, 10 times. If we use this German cable, Belden, and uh, those are all twisted pairs, individually or not individually shielded. But it is, as you can see, single coax is, you know, coax is for 
100 megahertz not for low uh, low frequency measurement is of course very uh, very handy because you can uh, connect and disconnect this BNC connector so easily. Uh, so those are examples. This is a signal in Lakeshore uh, temperature controller. Lakeshore works this way that puts plus minus wave to the thermometer and measures, but here, as you can see, what was modulated from low frequency 60 hertz is of the order of measurement. This is how it looks like after proper uh, proper branding. Uh, this is measurement from uh, hybrid, I think. Yeah, this is fractional quantum hole effect uh, measure. And you can see we could go to uh, something like uh, 150 nan nanovolt noise at 45 Tesla, which was not uh, actually before. And now uh, this is I just uh, printed for you from the Bible of Noise Reduction Techniques by Henry Ott. So this is summary of noise reduction techniques. I will not read this now. Uh, so on, and so on, and so on, and those are books. This is mentioned uh, book by Ott. This is a bit newer book. This is what was mentioned today. Uh, no, this is rather about electronic devices. And this is what was mentioned by Na uh, Max. Very good book about low level measurement from Kisling. And this is what you uh, will see in cell four, where we will find and remove grand loops from this measuring setup and we will also look how we can suppress high frequency noise by shielding and this is all thank you very much It was maximum depth. And in one pl some places of the lab, you cannot go that deep. We have, you know, this limestone bed is different. Anyway, interestingly, we always go below lake, this lake level. And still it doesn't help. It's, you know, in Florida, there is sand, but there are also layers of clay. So it's not like just the same level helps. 